First into the tank tonight is Edwina, who wants to make one of life's most amazing moments a whole lot better. My business is something that I believe every woman, every expecting parent should have access to. Thank you, Sharks, so much for having me. My name's Edwina Sharrick. I come from regional Tamworth, an awesome town in New South Wales, and I am the founder of Birthbeat. I'm a registered midwife, mother of two, and now a CEO of a company. And I'm here to ask for $200,000 for 10% in my company. So let me tell you a little bit about why Birthbeat came about and what it is we actually do. When I was pregnant with my own daughter, Polly, I didn't actually do antenatal classes. I believe because I'm a midwife, I'm gonna know what to do. How silly was I? <laughs> it made me realise, had I been more educated, I would have been more empowered in that experience. And my husband wouldn't have been as scared. <laughs> it was then that I found out that 41% of maternity units have closed in Australia in the last 15 years. We have 300,000 births in Australia. Mm. A lot of those in rural, regional and remote Australia. So I thought that's not good enough. So I created my own classes. So in November last year, Birthbeat launched online. It's an online portal that has over 14 hours of simple to watch videos, right from prenatal yoga through to what to expect in labour, how do you know when you're in labour, what to pack, through to how to breastfeed your baby, change a nappy, safely swaddle, safely sleep. Since going online, we've experienced huge success. We've got a scalable model now to get out to all of Australia and potentially the world. Thanks very much, Edwina. So you're looking for 200K at a $2 million valuation? 10%. I am. Edwina. So um, you're a midwife. How many babies have you delivered? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds? Right? Hundreds. I'm not actually a clinical midwife now. Okay. I've resigned from my clinical position to focus 100% on birth beat. That's really great. I That'll... love people who leave their jobs and focus 100% on their business. <laughs> it's a really? good thing, isn't it, Doctor? It really? is a good That's thing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's fantastic. That's great. So you've got a real passion for this stuff, haven't you? I sure do. This is a genuine product that improves the experience. So what I teach my women is it's about being educated, understanding the process, which removes the fear. And I see that women actually birth better and have a more positive experience or a positive outcome if they're educated. So Edwina, tell us how it works. How does it work? Oh yeah, yeah. can I show you around the portal? Sure, yeah. Would you like yeah, to have a look? Good idea. So, okay. <laughs> Well, this is the epidural exercise. That sounds like fun. So many people don't understand when they say, I'm going to have an epidural, the process that's involved. Let's not kid ourselves. You're not the first one to put birthing classes online. No, that's right. There are some companies that do it. What is unique about Birthbeat is that I'm actually a registered midwife. It's obstetric endorsed. So we've had four obstetricians go through the program. Plus, we offer prenatal yoga through to the breastfeeding consultant, so it's all packaged into this one-stop shop. What does your husband think about the idea of you giving up your full-time job and starting a business? Look, my husband's a very patient man, oh, thankfully. That's good. Um, what does he do? Because he's an engineer. He's the numbers analytical brain. Edwin. An engineer. So did he, did he engineer the $2 million valuation, or do you have some mathematics behind that? No, can I do have some... I was going to say, I do have some mathematics behind that. Um, OK, so the unit is $297 to get the entire modules. Yep. So 14 all, hours all 14 of videos. Hours. Yep. I get $240 profit per unit. We've sold 69 units, so we have $19,000. I really see this as, you know, maybe lower the price and then subscribe going forward. You know, what happens with the terrible twos? What happens with the one-year-old? So you can keep them on there forever. I actually have a plan. So my email system is quite sophisticated. I can know what date of birth, so then I know four months later that, hey, we're looking at starting solids, so now's the time to engage with my customer again. Yes. And say, you need to know what to do if your baby chokes. Which leads into a subscription model. Yeah. Which then, you know, which is, you know, God, if you can get that one right. Yeah. That's, um... Um... What are you mumbling at? What's your plan to take this forward? I'm very excited about some potential contracts that are coming up. We have a 50-unit trial signed with one of Australia's largest banks to provide this to their employees in part of their corporate wellness package. That corporate bank employs 55,000 employees. Oh, very good. 
We are also deep in discussion with HCF for Birthbeat to be the preferred provider for their online platform. So is HCF talking about incorporating it into one of their programs? Is yes. It? So it... And so how big is the HCF population? The HCF? They have 6,000 births a year. Do you notice I've not said anything yet? He does a lot of talking, doesn't he? I'm going to say something one day. Just like he thinks that none of it, other of us can have this conversation. No, exactly. Edwina. <coughs> Naomi, have you got something to say? Yes, hello, Edwina. So, so just Sorry. quickly, well, I was in the middle of a question at the same time. No, you choked. You can have it next, OK? No, no, so, here we go, so with Edwina. Respect to HCF, with, it's with, my with, turn. With respect to HSF Catalyst, what did they what did they invest in? What's their option? I can't hear either of you, sorry. I'm going to keep You've talking until I get my question because I'm getting tired of getting spoken my questions over. Platform. And I'm going to go blah, 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 and I'm going to interrupt the entire thing. I feel like I'm talking to my children. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a very good observation. Yeah. Edwina, um, I know Naomi's desperate to talk to you. Naomi, sorry. I'm patient. You no, sometimes you're not. You, you often demonstrate you're not patient, so it's all right. <laughs> I'm patient. The reason why often we need to be as investors is because it doesn't happen in the near term and it might be yep. a long play. See, the thing we don't net yet know about your business yep. is what it's going to cost to acquire a customer yep. to get the growth that you need. So what are you spending on marketing? Each couple receives a book. It's posted in the mail. They also get a little bag of goodie bags and then that's hand posted to them. Do you have a marketing expense above the line? Not yet. What I have done is an online campaign. With that is two videos. Those two videos, one on Instagram, one on Facebook, one's been viewed 52,000 times, one's been viewed 64,000 times. So I'm still struggling to, to make the big leap from, from $19,000 to your $2 million valuation. Yep. Give me the number that we think we're going to see in the next 12 months. 2020, I want to be a $5 million business, and I will be. <laughs> Based on? That we're going to sign two corporates that are both six-figure licences. So they will buy their licences. So give me, give me a number that you probably will hit on a revenue line for the next 12 months. I expect us to be 500,000 in the next 12 months. OK. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. First of all, well done. I mean, you are the authentic face of, of uh, positive birth experiences in Australia. I think that's great. I can't say I'm ever going to be a, a user of your product. <laughs> It's not an area where I feel I can add a huge amount of value. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you very much. So Edwina, I love what you're doing, especially with a focus on rural and regional Australia. Yeah. Um, I think you're already evolving your strategic partnerships in the right direction. So I don't think you need any of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Glenn. But I'm out, Edwina. Thank you. Glenn and I are out, three of you left. I think you've done an amazing job with getting a minimum viable product. What I don't see is the fact that you can scale the infrastructure that you've got to justify your valuation. So for this investment, I'm out. Thank you very much, Nan. Well, when you look at investing, part of that, we invest in the founders and you're great. And what you've done is fantastic. Entrepreneurs, you know, I really identify with them. I love what you're doing, especially from regional Australia and for regional Australia. I think he's in. It sounds um, like it. <sighs> I, I think I'm confused. So I've never been to a anything natal class in my life. Oh, and you've got the youngest babies. Not something I'm dreadfully proud of, but um, hey, yeah, the baby's healthy. I'm still married, it's all good. Um, so I don't quite get this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't see your way towards the numbers where you're going to get close to this. Look, I, I think in order just to, for us to leave here sometime this year, I'm, I'm going to go out. Okay, I thank can't you make so much, Steve. I really, really do wish you all the best. So, four sharks are out, Janine's left. You, um, you've been doing your business long, uh, but you haven't been doing this business long. You are authentic, though. 
You are the real deal. You have the credibility to come out and be an authority in this space. You gonna know, make an offer or are we just teasing? Midwife Edwina has started a business selling online birthing classes with plans to expand her range into the early childhood years. But with four sharks out, Janine is her last hope. You um <sighs> been doing your business long? Uh, but you haven't been doing this business long. You are authentic, though. You are the real deal. You have the credibility to come out and be an authority in this space. Oh, God. Is she going to make an offer or are we just teasing? Have you seen the Muppets? Yeah, there's two old guys that sit at the thing and just winge and carry on. <laughs> it's these two. Seriously, I miss picking. <laughs> come on, come on. I'll make you an offer. Thank you, Janine. There ah, you go. This is good. I think because you're just getting going. Uh, 200000 for 20% is too much at this point. I will give you $100,000 for 20% and a $100,000 loan. OK. What are you going to do? I would absolutely love to take well, Janine's. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> thank you. So oh, thank you so much, Naomi. Really thank great. Thank you. Really thank great pitch. So all the best. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you so much for your time. That's and I great. genuinely think we are going to make such an impact for women in Australia. We will. Great thank great you. Job. Thank well you. Done. Bye. Very impressive young lady. Gee, I liked her. It's amazing. That was amazing. My heart is like going, I seriously think she's about 220 beats per minute. She ticked all the boxes. Oh, wait. Articulate, clear vision. Confident. Done the work. She is the real deal. Next into the tank is Caroline, who's pioneering a completely new way to sell. Today, I'm bringing a very unique idea that allows mums to work from home and earn an income. I would definitely love to partner with the shark and take this to the US. Let's get circular. Hi, Sharks. I'm Caroline, and I'm seeking $250,000 in exchange for 25% of my business, Things for Bubs. Things for Bubs is an Australian distribution business. We currently distribute several unique baby products, including Adipass Baby Shoes, Baby Shusha Miracle Soothing Device, and Petit Bamboo Luxury Bamboo Baby Wear. Approximately 300,000 women give birth in Australia every single year, and one third of these women will decide to opt for stay-at-home work opportunities as opposed to return the workforce. Things for Bubs has capitalised on this, and as a result, over 50% of our wholesale accounts are actually stay-at-home moms that sell our products via their local networks. What's so unique about our model is that unlike other distribution businesses who distribute purely through bricks and mortar stores, we distribute through a network of dedicated consultants all around Australia. Thanks. Sharks, in just five years and with three small kids in tow, I have turned a crazy idea into a million dollar business, but now I'm ready for a partner. So who's ready to join me in empowering women all around Australia and overseas and making some money along the way? Oh. Well done, Caroline. So I, I'm fascinated with that shusha thing. So it's a baby shusha, it, it soothes babies to sleep. You know he's got two little baby girls, don't you? Oh, nice. Nah. Twins. Twin babies. Oh, beautiful. Can you give us a demonstration of that, please? Is it's, that possible? Yeah, sure, of course. So it's actually um, a man's voice. It's going shh on repeat. Would that work on Glenn? <laughs> shh. <laughs> I actually use it myself sometimes. I'm thinking the same thing, Steve. Can you uh, leave that on and just put it beside Janine? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's very soothing for adults too. I don't know about soothing. It's starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> so, Caroline, you're looking for $250,000 for 25% of your business, valuing at a cool $1 million. Yes, that's correct. So who influenced you to get into this business, apart from having three kids of your own? Basically, I, I, I'm from an IT background. Um, right. I was a project manager to start with, and then I decided to start a business. Um, I'd found um, a particular product overseas that I liked, and I thought, let's start distributing, and it's, it's grown from there. So 
I couldn't get into bricks and mortar stores, Baby Bunting, David Jones, Maya, it was near impossible. Um, but I just thought, you know what, let's try and replicate me, the market seller, to the wider community. So we currently service 600 accounts around Australia and 300 of those are dedicated consultants. So just understand consultants, is it equivalent to Tupperware, selling Tupperware? We, we, we wouldn't um, say that we're Tupperware, no. So they buy off us at wholesale and they sell at, at the retail price like a store would, but they keep the products um, at home and they sell them through their local markets, mothers groups, play groups and local communities. So how much would a consultant make? You might turn over like $500 or $1,000 at a market pay, perhaps one weekend. Oh. And some of my consultants do our baby expos now, so it's up to them how they sell the product. Nice. So really you're running a two-sided marketplace. You're looking for people to sell your products. Yes, you and do you're looking that. It's a traditional, it's a wholesale model, it's not a two-sided It's a whole, it is a wholesale model, but we obviously are looking at how the how um, conditions are changing in retail. Stores are, are falling down. Stores aren't falling down either. Not falling down, it's it's changing, it's changing. It is changing. The consumer wants to do online and bricks and mortar, so it's, it still exists. Yeah. And retail is suffering. No, you have to adapt and change, yep. but bricks and mortar is will always exist in some form. They're all talking about the future of retail. I'm the only one in retail. <laughs> Tell us, how are you going to spend the 250000 You're the only one in what? Retail. All right, chop liver. So, so the big... Uh, the online play. 300 pet stores around Australia, we're not in retail. Oh, we've got to go 500 stores, but... She's we're the only one in retail. retail. You're the one with the least retail. Caroline, I apologise for these sharks. They get out of control. That's OK. So we can argue about your business model. You can tell us your numbers and prove it works. Yeah, yeah. We hit a million dollars last year. In, in one year? Yep. Yeah. We've, we've doubled at least every year. Um, tell us about the future. Where do you see this going? I guess we want to grow our number of consultants. We want to turn a million dollar business into a $10 million business. Right. Caroline, if you got the $250,000 investment from yep. one of us, yep. where are we going to be in three years? Let's say we, we hit the million, 1.2, 1.4 this year. Um, I'd at least like to be at four, four million. I, don't, I think that's pretty achievable. I think, to be honest, we could even do more, six million. Um, I'd like to be at 10 million. That's what it comes down to. I feel like it's an opportunity for you to take advantage of something I've also built. Um, you know, we're already making a profit. It's, it's probably less risky than some other investments. I like it. You're assessing uh, the risk levels of other options that we might invest in. That's I good. I think that's very that's clever, good. very, very astute. Caroline, you talked about coming here and you need some help at this stage. Yes. I, thank you, thank you. So you're looking for more product or ideas to push Stop through it. this distribution channel? So, I, yeah. And I'd love to take this over to the US as well. I basically need a digital marketer, an in-house IT person, and buy stock. That's oh, it. Steve, an in-house IT person. Yeah, I'm not available. I've got other things on. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I'm going to make the same uh, offer as Andrew. 30% for 250000 Thank you, Naomi. Thank you very much. Well, you've got three offers, and obviously you've got to be very careful around who that partner might be. What are you going to do? Caroline recruits stay-at-home mums to sell her baby products. Three sharks want to invest. Steve is offering $250,000 for 20% of the business with a payback arrangement. And Naomi and Andrew are each offering $250,000 for 30%. Well, you've got three offers, and obviously you've got to be very careful around who that partner might be. What are you going to do? Well, I mean, would, would, you, would yourselves work together at all on this Who's deal? Who's yourselves? Um, Andrew and Naomi. Oh, OK. You're already wiping Steve off? No, I'm just wondering. They're offering the same um, percentages, Equity. and I, I kind of did sort of earmark both of you as people that might sort of work well with our business. I just can't see how this would work with Andrew. OK. Knowing the model of how we work with our entrepreneurs. Yep. I think I'd grow your business too fast. Naomi wouldn't be able to keep up. <laughs> um, OK. This is hard. <laughs> um, can I have a... All right, I'll give you a two and a half times return. 250k, 20% oh, yeah, equity. Desperate. You need help. Not a financial model. It's a financial model. 250k, 20% equity, still valuing you at $5 million. That's the only way you need to look at it. Okay. And I'm backing Caroline. Okay, um, all right. Okay, I've made a decision oh, and... That was, um, you didn't yeah. have to talk to anyone? Look, I've come here, I came here with one shark in particular that I really wanted to work with. Mm. Um, so, so thank you for all your offers. Um, but Andrew, I'd like to accept oh! your offer. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Thank Thanks. you. We're going to have fun. I think we will. I'm really surprised. Yeah, me too. I really get you, I think. Yeah, I so think, we're going to grow I think the business. Well. And Naomi, I, I also think you're amazing too. So. OK, well done. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. You did a great job. Thank well you. done. Thanks great so pitch. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. There's a woman that has great taste. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Naomi. No, that's all right. You'll get me next time. I didn't expect that. Oh. Steve, have you got enough product there? Would you like to sort of... <laughs> next, a baby brand with big promise. I can actually see the global potential. But could it be an even bigger gamble? It's still in the high-risk stage. I don't know what to do. Next in the tank, an Adelaide entrepreneur who's got big plans for Tiny Tots. My inspiration is to promote Kakadu and its amazing art. And I wanted a unique way to showcase this around the world. Hi, Sharks. My name is Kyla Lee Bradford, owner of Piccaninny Tiny Tots. I have come here today to ask for $40,000 for 20% of my business. We produce children's clothing using authentic Aboriginal art from Kakadu. Kakadu is listed as a World Heritage Site and known worldwide for our remarkable Aboriginal art. I have racked my brain for many years for a unique way to showcase our beautiful art and traditional beliefs. Our first designs featured the Almungi, which for our region means freshwater turtle. It comes from my mother Cheryl Kale, who is a traditional owner and a well-respected elder from this region. So with every product you purchase, you're able to take home a large part of Australian heritage and your own little piece of kakadu. Our clothing is also 100% cotton, so very gentle on your children's skin. My dream is to be an international brand. I mean, we have so much beauty and it is so unique. There's a niche in the market. No one's even attempted to go down the baby range with the Aboriginal art. And having my culture and heritage behind me, I would love to see it in the international market. Thank you, and I'd really love to show you some of our designs. I'd love to see yeah, it. Thank please you. Please do. My favourite colour. Oh, Orange. Excellent. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. The shoes are hand-painted and these are printed. Yes. I love the design. Gorgeous. It's Aboriginal, it's clever, but it's a little bit um, contemporary too. Yes, my aim was to go for the brighter colours to really make our art pop. I've got an 18-month-old daughter, but I'm trying to work out what size she might be because I don't buy the clothes in the house. So... That's too small. That's too small. I think it might be too small. <laughs> 
That's eight <laughs> months. <laughs> You'd go for a size two. You got any of them there? Um, <laughs> I will send you one straight over. Not She's a trying to sell her business, not one at a time. <laughs> Tell us about your mum. She is just a remarkable woman. My mum has brought up five children and then had foster kids my whole life. She is just unbelievable. And that is my absolute drive behind this business is to just, we've all had a hard life. And now that I've got something amazing, I'd really love to, you know, just show mum and, and bring her on this journey with me. Cause she so is, she's an inspiration for you. She's unbelievable. She is my, my inspiration. She must be very proud. Yeah. <laughs> So how much of your own money have you put into the business, Kylie? Uh, so we've put in $20,000, uh, but I have no uh, debt to the business whatsoever. Um, there's no loans. I don't even have a credit card to this business. <laughs> Could we break the revenue down to a per item? What does this cost you to make? Uh, it cost me $4.80 to make, and that's landed after customs and shipping costs. Then I will wholesale them a romper and jumpsuit for 20 what will they retail them for in stores? $36.99. Good margins. Did you mention how much you've sold so far? We've sold 2,300 units so far. What does that translate into dollars? Uh, so we've made $36,800. Profit of $4,000. And you're drawing a wage from the company? By the no, sale? not at the moment. Whatever money I made, as soon as I hit my target, went in to buy the next colour range. The name? Yes. Have you had any feedback on the name at all? Uh, Piccaninny has been well known in the Northern Territory for Little One. I recoil a bit from the name. To me, it's, it's, got some, it's got some loadings that obviously you haven't experienced. Yes, OK. But my first gut reaction is, ooh, that's a, an unusual name. Do you mean unusual or offensive or...? Potentially offensive. But if it just means little one? Well, I, 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 to me it meant, it, it meant something different. It meant, you know, it meant an indigenous little one and, and, not, and not, in a, not in a positive sense. We've never had any ne negative feedback. It's always been a name that we've used since I was little. All our family up bush have used it. All our Aboriginal family at home still use it. They don't find it offensive. Oh, no, I understand that. I mean, I'm from the bush as well, but I do know that it could be interpreted as an ethnic slur, excuse me. OK. I love it. I think it looks good. Yeah. And I'm glad that I'm glad there's no discomfort with you with the name. Yeah, but no, to not me, at all. So maybe it's my hang-up. But uh, <laughs> So trademark, etc. cetera, for, for picking it? Uh, not on the name, no. Can you get a trademark on the name? Have you investigated it? I'm not quite sure. Um... Because you do know, though, if you don't have the trademark and someone else does, then they can actually take your profit. So, um, mm. so it's, in, it's a really important thing. Look, I think it's fantastic. I, I mean, you've got a niche. You've got something authentic. I could see um, this being a, kind of a cool item for kids. But it's just a bit too early. From an investment point of view, sorry, I'm out. OK, thank you. Your artwork is beautiful. Um, thank obviously, you. you're from a talented family and you're very impressive. I'll yeah. definitely buy it. Yes. My nieces are having babies at the moment, so I will be absolutely a customer. OK. Unfortunately for me, though, it's just a little bit too early. So for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. So, Kylie, um, I love what you're doing. As you know, it's very early stages. So it's not something for me as an investment. I'm out. Thank you. I love Aboriginal art. I have walls adorned with it. I'm a director of South Sydney Football Club, which has got a, a huge connection to the Aboriginal yes, Indigenous community, <laughs> as you would know. Yes. Are you a Rabbitohs fan? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I am a Broncos fan. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, there you're you sounding good there, Kylie. Yeah. No, but she doesn't lie. How good's that? <laughs> I'll make an offer. On the proviso that yeah. you can talk him into being involved.
I'm, I'm worried. I've got to hang up on the name. Kylie Bradford wants $40,000 for 20% of her baby clothing business. Three sharks are out, and her only hope for a deal comes with a catch. I'll make an offer on the proviso that you can talk him into being involved. I know he's been thinking about this. So here's the offer. It's $20,000 for 40%. And the other 20,000 that you require, which we need to provide, is a loan to the business to help fund its next stage of growth. So if you think that is an investment you would like, you should then talk to Mr Baxter. You know, I can actually see the global potential. I like to think about the Oshkosh brand. I just think that there's a global brand identity here that can actually be an indigenous Australian global brand identity. So that, that's actually really quite cool. I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried about a few things. I've got to hang up on the name. OK. This is not a yes or a no about anything at this point Should he in time. have, Kyle? I mean, should, should there be? Tell me, what feedback have you had? See, that's the thing, because, I mean, I even asked my elders, is this OK to use? Can we use Picaninny? They said, yeah, of course, everybody uses Picaninny in the Northern Territory. But if you have heard it maybe in another area and it's, it's not come across so well, I could I possibly understand where you're coming from. Would you contemplate changing the name if necessary for, if, it, if it was offensive elsewhere? Um... That's a really hard one, <laughs> a really hard one, because we've, uh, yeah, that's really hard. If Steve's picked this up, and I have vaguely, but Steve's picked this up that some people find the name a slur, if that's going to be a commercial barrier to Kylie's success, she should consider it, I mean, for her own good. In the context of that terminology, John's dead right. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what to do. Um, no, oh, crap. If I'm... Listen to a picture I want to invest in, I start taking notes about if I were to invest, what would I insist on? And I, these are the three things I took. I had royalty and licence. You are putting someone else's art under this. So there's an IP assignment that has to occur. Yeah. It's in the family at the moment. That's fantastic. Yeah. We all know that families don't sometimes some, some stay friendly, all right? Yeah, so okay. um, we just need to protect ourselves there. The name. I'd take it at face value that you'd be willing to change it was commercially damaging the success of the company. So that's fine. I can get over that. And the we need the trademark. The trademark has Otherwise. to happen. And the trademark has to happen as well. If it can't be trademarked, we probably should be looking to change the name anyway. So I, I see a lot of possibilities for this. I mean, and I came here wanting to do tech investments of straight equity. <laughs> now I'm going to get into children's clothing. You have a child. I do have a child, but that's not the same thing. Right? <laughs> Steve, you've heard my offer. I, I, I could do that offer. So then it would be two sharks, 40%, mm -hmm. and you would have a $20,000 loan to draw down on to grow the business, as well as injecting the $20,000 in capital. So you need to think about that, because it's got to feel right for you. I'll just take a moment. <laughs> just okay. relax. Take your time. I would love, love to take your offer. Hey. <laughs> so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. Baxter and Carl doing a few deals here, aren't we? <laughs> Where's your mum? She around? She'll be so proud. Oh, no. <laughs> love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you, baby. Thank you. I'm sure you're very proud. <laughs> she deserves everything. She's such a hard little worker. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. You're in business. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Thank you. Love you too. Thank you. Love you too. 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 Love
you've made a very sensible investment and I'm absolutely sure your investment will be secure. The key question is how to get it to the next, next level. level. That is selling, will sell. Next into the tank is Damien, who's pegging his future on an ingenious camping invention. We've got four boys at home, so we get out and about a lot, and that's how this idea came about. My product is different, and it's something that, that solves a common problem. Hi, Sharks. My name's Damien Joyce, and I'm the owner and creator of Hexpegs. I'm seeking an $80,000 investment for a 20% equity in my business. So what are hex pegs? Hex pegs are a multi-purpose caravan and camping peg that are drilled into and out of the ground using any type of drill or impact driver. So the idea came to me on a family holiday after growing increasingly tired of hammering in normal style pegs, bending them, hitting your thumbs, cursing, etc. <laughs> I knew there had to be a better way. So after 12 months of hard work, Hexpegs were launched in January of 2017. Sales have exceeded all of our expectations to date. What I'm searching for now is a business partner and mentor to help me to drive Hexpegs deeper into the Australian market, the US market, and the rest of the world. So, who wants to see how they work? Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. let's see. Okay. Can I sit up close? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So we've got two styles of peg. We've got our hook tops, which obviously have the hook on the top, and our flat tops, as the name suggests, is a flat top. Yeah, that's a flat top. I'll grab my drill. Did you want to come out and give it a go, did you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm keen on this one. I'll show you how it's done. I'm keen on okay. this one, so. So, all you do is grab the drill, put a slight amount of pressure on it. I want to make sure even a Sheila can do it, that's all. <laughs> if Naomi can do it, everyone could do it. That's exactly right. I think she's armed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Don't hold, you're gonna put a little bit of, let go of the peg now. Put a little bit of pressure on the drill. Yep, that's it, done. Now take it out. There that's you what go. I want to see. Some, yep, there you go. You'd actually think I knew what I was talking about. I was and then just grab the peg and let the drill go. Yeah, turn the drill off now, and it'll come out. Very good. Perfect. So, I was always on the end of a drill for my dad. Yep, there always you go. Always on a piece of a wood. The three good things about them as far as pegs go, they go in a lot easier. Because of the thread, they grab a lot better when they're in. And they also, they come out a lot easier. So, Damien, Hex Pegs. I know another company mm. from South Australia yeah. called Hex Pegs. Yes, that's correct. Very similar name. Very similar name. Different product. Different product. Similar name. Unfortunately, you won't be able to hang your clothes off of these. You're here in the tank seeking $80,000 for 20%. Correct. Valuing your business at $400,000. Correct. Tell us about your background. I'm a married father and stepfather of four boys. I'm a firefighter in the MFS in Adelaide. Look, I love what I do because I get to help people. I get to work as a part of a great team and serve the community. Similar with this, I get to manufacture something and create something and provide something to people that I can help people with. And are you selling direct to consumers, no distribution partners? No. Look, I'm looking for one, and that's half the reason why I'm here. Um, no, I know one or two. Yeah. <laughs> so where do your customers come from? Caravan park or a camping ground's a captive market, because normally someone's always sitting there watching someone back a caravan in and <laughs> sort of seeing what they've got new. Having a shardy, sitting yeah, back watching right. the neighbours put up their tent. Yep. <laughs> Quite often I get customers that ring me up and say, look, I saw your pegs being used at such and such a caravan park, and I want to buy some. Since you've opened the can of worms, tell us about the numbers then. We do four packs all the way up to 30 packs. Probably the most common sale would be a 10 pack or a 15 pack. And that's sold online direct to a consumer? Correct. What do you sell them for? Like a four pack's $55 retail. A 10 pack is $125. It goes so on and so forth up to 30, which is $315. And what's your margin on that? The gross profit margin would be around about 75%. I've sold just over 13,000 units so far. OK. And generated $138,000 in sales. OK. Damien, I mean, you've got great traction already. In yeah. only a year to sell 13,000 units, what's the forecast for the future? Our first quarter sales this year compared to last year, we've almost doubled that already. So going on those figures, I'd be looking at we will be doing $250,000 worth of sales this year. Mm -hmm. um, with That's calendar year? Yes, correct. With a view to go to 750000 next year. Yep. 
I think what you're looking for uh, is a partner more than an investor. And all I would be for you is an investor because I'm not a camper and yep. so I don't understand the space. Yeah, cool. But bloody well done. Thank you. But I'm out. No worries, thank you. I'm going to make you an offer, Damien. Oh! So you're making about seven bucks a peg. Is that uh, right? Correct, yeah. Wouldn't take long to get your money back, would it? I'm going to offer you 80,000 bucks, right, over 20% of the company, right? I'm going to want $160,000 back at a buck a peg. Oh, oh now, now he's got a feeding. Get 160 k back and then we'll drop down to 5%. OK. So I'm your banker. Damien, he's not your banker because the banks don't charge 100% interest. You'd be better off getting bank debt given that deal. For a second there, we thought he was actually going to be wonderful, but, you know, that's not going to happen. Look, I really love what you're doing and I love the camping. I think it's fantastic. Not that I've done it since I was a child, but never mind about that. <laughs> Wouldn't be good in those shoes. No, that's right, darling. Yeah, Five stars, all in a row. That's what we <laughs> like. Damien, I would be wanting to woo Glenn in this deal because I do know he has that distribution network. Really glad to see more innovation coming out of South Australia, but for this deal, I'm out. Thank you very much. Because you know my uh, relationship with Austrail. I didn't, but I do now. <laughs> so I'm an investor and a director of the biggest seller of these sort of things in the Australian market. I can mm. see an application. Absolutely. I'm just concerned whether we'll do something similar or do we do something with you? I've got the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we need to deal, don't we? Yeah, good on you, mate. Yeah. I like it. So I'm going to throw it out there, 80k for 40%. 40%? 40? You think I'm touching him up? He hasn't asked for his money back. <laughs> yeah. Damien, I know that one introduction will put you in just about every camping store and major hardware store across Australia. Damien, while, while you're considering these two characters at the end, I'll, I'll tell you where I'm at. I mean, A, you've got some good offers. Well done on the design. I think it's a lovely design and you've been very thoughtful about the way you've done it and gone about your business. Thank you. The market's a bit narrow for me. I wish you luck. Go for those other offers, but I'm out. Thank you. So, Damien, you've got two offers on the table. You've got yes. one offer from Glenn at $80,000 for 40%. Mm -hmm. You've got your second offer from Steve at $80,000 for 20%, which he wants a return of $1 per peg until he gets $160,000, in which time his equity will be reduced to 5%. Yes. What are you going to do? Fireman Damien has come up with an easy way to insert and remove tent pegs. He's got two offers for his business, Hex Pegs. One from Glenn, the other from Steve. What are you going to do? Right. First things first, I have my wife out the back. Ah. And I did say to her that if I did get offered a deal that I would actually bounce it off here first. Sounds like you've got the same sort of marriage I've got, which yeah. is I make all the important decisions, but my wife decides what's important. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> yeah, no, very true. Very no, true. You, you better go, go and chat. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I love that line. I'm going to be using that one. That's a crap deal, Glenn. You are touching him up. Absolutely touching him up. You're Mate. not doing so bad yourself, can, buddy. Can, Stephen? Stick this up your left nostril. <laughs> the story is we've got two deals. OK. So one is from Steve, and it's 80000 for 20%, but he wants a dollar a peg until he gets 160000 back, and then he's going to reduce his equity to 5%. Huh, OK. And what's the other deal? The second one is from Glenn, who okay. wants 80000 for 40%. However, he does have contacts in the Austral business. OK. Right, what do you think? I really like Steve. <laughs> Greetings, welcome to the tank. Hello. And Hi, you are? You? This is Simon. My name's Simon. Simon. Hi, Simon. Welcome. You do. welcome. Hi. What do you think of this guy? He's done, doing a good job, isn't he? He's OK. He's OK. <laughs> Aren't you proud of him? I am really proud of him. He's worked really hard. Really, really hard. Yeah. So, Damien, you've got two offers. What are you going to do? 
Okay, so I have a question, Glenn. Yes, Damien. I uh, came at 20%, you've offered 40, do you want to meet us halfway at 30? Mate, I just know the value that I bring. If we're going to be a 60-40 partner, yep. you'll get a lot more of my attention because it's not a big investment in terms of my portfolio. Yeah, Damn close to a partner too at 40%, right? He's really touching That's up That's why I'm here. a partner, mate. It's all about risk and reward. Just remember, the journey gets so much easier. So much easier with a vet on board, mate. Go get the vet on board. He'll help you sell 10 pigs. What are you going to do? I've, I think I've made my decision. Steve. I appreciate your offer. Oh, I thought you were going to point at me and say, no, I'll take I, it. I really do appreciate your offer, and I don't mean to be rude by knocking it back, but I think probably the best fit for us is Glenn. So we'll go to the 60 40 then. Done. Well, here you go. That's what I would do. <laughs> Thank you. That's a great Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 And it's something, obviously, that struck a chord. We're disrupting a very old industry, and it's really exciting. People want to see change, and I think we're that change. Hello, predators of the sea. We're Cupe and we're here to change banking for millennials. We're here seeking $380,000 in exchange for 8.4% equity in our business. Sharks, traditional banking as we know it has been old and has not changed for the past decade. With poor customer service, uh, lack of innovation, and generally high fees that people don't like to pay. Many people stay because there's no better option. We're here to change that. Cupay will be a bank that you love. We're going to build things from the ground up. So things like live push notifications about transactions to uh, personalized financial services. Rather than having loyalty cards, for example, we'll automatically apply discounts based on the things that they buy in the past. We are already working with over 150,000 university students in our Marketplace app, where students can buy and sell things on campus, like textbooks, tickets to events, and merchandise. One out of eight university students already has Cupay, and now we're rolling out the Cupay MasterCard, which will allow students to spend their money on campus, off campus, and online. Putting that card together with the Cupay app, we'll be providing the banking experience that should have been. Will it be a credit card or a prepay card or both? It acts like a debit card. Since we released the card two weeks ago, 5,000 students have signed up and we're on our way to deliver 3,000 cards in the next three weeks. So where do you come in? Well, we've already raised $620,000 for marketing and operations and we're seeking to raise a further $380,000 to help grow our business all over Australia. Sharks, the banking industry has been without competition since dinosaurs roamed the earth. And now that's all about to change. We are the asteroid that's coming in hot. Um, thank you very much. Who are you? Uh, I'm Mo. I am Zeki. I'm Andrew. So who's the boss? Uh, Zach and I are co-founders, but Zach is the CEO. This is our second successful business that we founded together. We started right out of uni, building apps for other people and seeing them achieve their dreams. We wanted to build an app for ourselves and that was the beginnings of Cupay. So why do you think banking's broken? When was the last time you visited a bank branch? Um, most people will tell you it's, you know, either they've never done it or they don't enjoy it. So where we come in, and certainly when we work with these students, we have a very strong understanding about how they spend their money, where they spend their money, and what they actually want when they do spend that money. Can I just ask you a really fundamental question? One of the things I love about my bank is they have a banking license. Of course. And I know that I can trust them. So you've got a banking license. 
We're a corporate authorised representative um, of an Australian financial services licence holder. So while we're not a bank just yet, the services that we provide at this stage certainly fit within the legal regulations within Australia. I'm struggling with your differentiation in the marketplace. I'm a, I'm a customer of a major big four bank. Of course, yes. Everything you've described, I'm getting now from them. So other than a really good marketing play, please give us the lowdown on why this is such a great opportunity. That's I, right. I think I'm missing out on something here. I think uh, the key strength that we have is our focus on the on the demographic that we're, we're catering to. So that's a marketing play. That's a yep. customer demographic play. So the sort of are question... they getting any better benefits? Of course. If they bank with you. Absolutely. So, for example, if you're a student and you really want to know whether or not you have enough money to go out on a Thursday night, um, being notified with the location of every purchase that you've made so that you know, uh, you feel secure in that. But what's different from opening up an app on my phone, I can see my bank balance straight away and I know exactly all my transactions. Am I missing something? We, we did a survey before we did any of this for 2,000 people, university students, our users, and we asked them, what's your, well, how do you save money? Um, the answer is 40% of them, 43 actually, came back and said that their saving strategy was, I don't look at my bank account. So... <laughs> what, what do you mean? If I don't look at it, I won't spend it? They, they assume they just use their card until it stops working. <laughs> Sounds like you surveyed my children. <laughs> <laughs> the no, funny you're thing... talking about the bank of Papa. The bank of Glenn, yes. <laughs> you know, it's not actually students. It's actually people between the age of 18 to 25. That's our target demographic. Right. One of the features that they were most excited about was just knowing, for example, at the end of every week, um, we tell them, here's how much you have to spend in fun money, and here's how much you have to spend, you know, in terms of real money. So things like rent or textbooks, yep. etc. The fact that we do that for them is, I guess, the, the differentiator. It's not just saying, for example, you know, hey, you've spent $500 this month on textbooks. It's more like saying, uh, hey, did you know you have $100 that you can spend on going out with friends? And that difference, I know it sounds subtle, but from a millennial's perspective, that's the difference between them looking at their bank account versus just hoping that they have that money. So I just want to get to the bottom of your numbers now so we understand. Last year, we did $10 million of transactions in Australia. So in terms of revenue, the way we make money at the moment, we take a clip off every transaction and we have affiliate relationships. Um, so for example, we sell merchandise on our platform. So people can buy things like hoodies, beanies, gowns, etc. Of that $10 million, how much did you get? Um, so last year we made $220,000 of revenue. Um, the year prior to that it was around 56. So we, we grew quite rapidly in the first year. In the second year, we kind of realized that, you know, we're getting as many societies as we can, and so that's when we went to the UK. So this year, we anticipate that most of our growth in terms of actually existing revenue. So why do you think the UK is going to be a bigger source of revenue? So we, we essentially you know, started to run out of customers in Australia, and the UK is three times larger than Australia. Yeah. So Australia. 150k uni students you said you had, was that right? So yeah. it's 150,000 monthly active users. Um, what, what led you to the genius impression that you'd, you'd, you'd top the market? Um, sorry, I, I was referring to the student uh, societies rather, rather than the actual All students. Right, so your marketing yes. channel in the universities through the yeah. societies Correct. and the clubs and the, right. and the... Which is incidentally runs. another piece about why this we think we can do this better than anyone. It's a factory of, I guess, students every year because we have these societies. So, you know, the, the law societies or the biology societies. When students first come to university, they typically sign up for those. So the committee says to the students, please download the app and then we can... Yes, you can buy, for make, example, make a ticket to our event or... or do whatever. So that, that's your wedge, that's, that's your, okay. the thing you wedge in the door to get access to the students yeah. and then actually sell them further financial services. Yeah. And in the UK we're growing out 3.4 times faster in, than Australia. You, um, you're growing three and a half times faster. Yeah. yeah. Where are we going to be in three years from now? We think that we can probably get around 50% of the market of students in Australia in the next three years. Yep, which means? which means it's probably around 500,000 students. Which means? Uh, which means that they would probably be transacting around four or five times every month. And in terms of the average transaction amount, you're probably talking about $92. That's what it's been pretty solidly. That's 180 million bucks a month. Uh, it, it sounds about right. Holy shit, that's amazing. Mo, Andrew and Zach are taking on the banks with a high-tech play for the millennial market. And there's big money in it. That's 180 million bucks a month. Um, it, it sounds about right. Holy shit, that's amazing. Keep going, I'm starting uh, to get excited. Realistically, we definitely think we could be making four or five million of revenue a year. Um, what sort of cash dropping out the bottom? Uh, probably around 50%, give or take. Um, be a very high margin business, yeah. Two million 
and climbing fast. I'd hope so. All right, I'm in, guys. I'll take, I'll take the lot for what you want. Um, 380K for 8.4%. Um, awesome. Fantastic. That's awesome. With any of the other sharks? No, no bites from the other sharks. <laughs> You're actually really impressive. There's, there's, you, you, I can't fault you. But for this one, I don't understand tech bells. They Fair just enough. blow my head. <laughs> You've got a great offer. I'm out. Awesome. Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Janine. What are you thinking? Yeah, look, I, look it, fabulous pitch, guys. You have all the answers. You're very impressive, young guys. Um, I've got three other fintech investments out there at the moment. Um, so for that reason, I'm out. Thanks, Thanks for offering me. I'm interested, definitely interested. 8.4% is not very exciting. Would have liked a bigger chunk. But I mean, you're impressive. But I think on balance, I'm just not compelled. Uh, I wish you luck, but I'm out. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Well, and there was one. You can just take mine and ignore her, because, you know. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> $380,000 for 8.4% of your business, which is what you asked for. We definitely think that we need a female presence. You know, the, the more people, the better. Steve and I never work together. Is that what you're asking? You're asking for two sharks. That would, okay. be, that would be beneficial. I'm, I'm not uh, uh, that greedy with this deal. Um, I'll take the lot, or I'll take uh, a 50% part thereof of what you're so asking you for today. you say you'll work with me? <laughs> <laughs> I won't work with Naomi, but she can have half of my investment. We'll have separate board meetings <laughs> if, if you need to be kept apart. You guys must be very special, because Steve said he would never work with Naomi. This could be the first oh, wow. ever. Hang on a minute, I'm oh, in this conversation. I haven't agreed to it yet. Yeah, but again, for, for what it's worth, we definitely value the relationship. If you guys are really doing what you say you're going to do, then um, it's, it's a believable story of which I'm buying. I absolutely see this as a market that, it, you know, is, is our future. And I wanted to be associated with that. And that is the only reason I'm accepting to go halves with Steve. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, Naomi can drag along behind me. That'd be fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Good on you. Well. So awesome. do we have a deal? So do we have yeah, a deal? I think we have a deal. Right. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks so much. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Excited to have you on board. Yeah, yeah. It'll be fun. Gosh, it is literally something we never thought would happen. Is Steve and I doing it? Oh, really? Is this the first time? First time ever. That's awesome. Well done, guys. All right, lads. I think you did well. We're going to read about those guys. They're going to do yeah. well. And the best part of it is to see you two working together. Oh God, it's no. amazing. <laughs> so I'd like to see a big hug between you two. That would be... No. You'd like to see it, but guess what? <laughs> You're going to be disappointed, buddy. <laughs>